Welcome back to another episode, continuing our Turbo Barra 80 series conversion. Previously, the 80 was unfortunately involved in an accident and needed a front end rebuild, which snowballed into us deciding to do a Turbo Barra conversion while we had the whole thing apart. So far, we have stripped down the 80, removed everything from the Ford Territory donor car we are using, installed billet oil pump gears and heavy duty valve springs in the block. Got the ZF Auto adapted to the cruiser transfer, mounted to the 4 litre barra block and into the 80 series. Got a big turbo mounted with exhaust manifold and we've done the intake and injectors. Today's episode is a very exciting one because it's finally time for a complete reassembly of the outside of the 80. We do bar work, mount all the new panels, intercooler, radiator and a whole bunch more to try and get this thing ready for the Coffs Toyota Show deadline. This is uh, no very expensive. Takes no responsibility. It's probably like a thousand bucks. So if it's wrong, then they owe us a thousand bucks. I don't know what you had planned for the day, but it's gone. Fixing cars is just growing up Lego. So. This is 30 year old Lego and the instructions are in the bin. So. <laughs> Proudly supported by Opus Campers, Ultimate Nine, The Tread, Superior Engineering, GME, and in part by got a massive list of things here on my phone which I'll pop up on the screen and we're just gonna keep making our way through all the things that we can to try and get this car finished. I'm just waiting for Birdo to get back. He's gone to the shops to grab our last couple of things that we need and then we'll probably start by getting this rad support on and then from the rad support we can build out that'll mean we'll be able to get our outer guards on and all the bush door flights, the headlight buckets, the front grille and make this thing look like an actual 80 series again. With the radiator support bolted in, Birdo could now mount up the outer guards. How's this mate? Front of the car's actually back together. I'm pretty excited because look it, like it looks car. like an actual car again now. It's not just a pile of junk in the shed here. I don't know if you can see his hair, but it's a bit messy. He's been pulling it out. <laughs> so I thought, I'll bar it back to the other four. Now you're going to keep going with the front part now, get like your grill, your light buckets, your lights, all that stuff in. Yeah, correct. We got lights. Where are they from? Porsche door. We got pretty lights for a pretty car. Keep Demi happy. Obviously in the crash, all these plastic buckets were all broken. We've had to get some and you know, they're a bit, they're a bit worse for wear. So we're going to clean everything up, make everything look nice, go that extra, extra mile just so everything's, you know, it's not just a slap together GQ Patron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these are painful to get as well. Very you hard you to can't get. get this stuff new. No. You can only get second hand. Yeah. So these came with it, but they're pretty scudgy, but we got better ones of them. So we're just going to build the lights up with yeah. the best of what we have. Those plastic brackets, those metal surrounds, and then the nice bush door lights in there. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. The headlight buckets were scoured back using some Scotch Bright, given a fresh coat of paint and then gave all the aluminium a polish up. I've got my solar and iron, I pulled the tip out. It's just like hot out the end of it. This plastic's all faded and whatever, so you use heat, it brings all the oils out of the plastic, it makes it dark, it makes it look a lot better. Revitalise this a little bit. We don't Make want to it. do the rest real nice and have it looking real bad. We got a new light. Ooh. Oh shit. I thought we were gonna leave the plastic on. Nah, nah, I'm not about that. The bush doofs are about to go on. Mate, this hard work. You need three hands for this shit. You want me to put on a tripod and help? Nah, me? mate, nah, nah, nah. Don't want you to have anything to do with this. I want it done right. I'm a strong, independent man. Doesn't accept help off anyone. That's the bush doof headlights, the surrounds, the grill. A bunch of stuff on the front here starting to come together. We probably will pull this back off though and polish it up a little bit. Try and make it look as nice as possible. Getting exciting though, coming together. 
Next step was to get the radiator mounted in, but our old brackets were all pretty rusty and dirty, so Birdo went to his mate's shop to clean them all up. We got the sandblaster, we got the parts. This is what the parts look like. Yeah, they're a bit scudgy, we've made everything else nice. Thanks to Benny from Just Lubes for letting us use his sandblasting machine. Bloody good way to get rusty brackets and metal back to new. This is the after shot, so they're all nice and clean, nice and smooth. Give them a little bit of a wipe off when I get back to the shed and uh, wax and grease remover and then ready for paint. Right, yeah, so they're all sandblasted. We've got them back at the shop now. I'm getting ready to put on some edge primer because it's bare metal, you've got to use special primer so the paint sticks. The amount of effort we've gone through for everything else, we couldn't just bang, right? I felt bad. We couldn't do it. Couldn't just put uh, rusty mounting plates on. Yeah, I'm a redneck and I couldn't do it. <laughs> So while we're waiting for the paint to dry on those beards, I've got this lower skirt back from the, the, the painters. Now I'm just trying to get it all to fit. So this is off a different car, the other guards are off a different car, and the guards are obviously off the crash car. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, not everything fits straight perfect, so I've got to do a little bit of massage and a bit of loving and yeah. new bolts and make sure everything works. So. We got these uh, headlight brackets, I think we uh, touched on them the other day that they were missing some of the clips for this to bolt into. I've got a little piece of the old grill, it's plastic. I've got a zippy tie. I'm gonna put him in there and then plastic weld it so we can actually bolt them on properly. So I've got the uh, bonnet latch and bonnet cable all hooked up and then uh, the extra catch. I've got these polished, all this all back on. Now I've got these, they're finally dry. And then we've got a special guest appearance, the car crasher at the shed, Demi herself. Where is she? Yeah. Who? What's your thoughts on the car coming back together? How do you feel about it? I'm feeling like all this hard work of mine really paid off. How long until you crash it again? 25 years. That's when I'll get a 60. You ready? So next up, we're going to put the radiator in. Ooh, it's in. What radiator did we get and why did we get it? Just a factory replacement one, mate. It's a, it's a 1FZ one. Apparently um, that's what you do for these, but I'm just going off what other people say, so if it's wrong, then um, it's on them, not me. This is uh, very no expensive. Takes no responsibility. This is probably like a thousand bucks, so if it's wrong, then they owe us a thousand bucks. Boom, it's fitted, it's in. You know what we can check? Check if this hose that I've got, that supposedly fits. This is an FG Falcon radiator hose. Apparently this fits. Doesn't look very fitty. Why does nothing ever fit? Well, because this is a motor from a Ford, and this is a Toyota. You can't just buy one to fit. Why can't we just buy a normal hose? Just move it around as if it was a normal hose. Well, that's what I, I bought the one that everyone says fits. It doesn't fit. No, well, they f***ing lights. I think these go in these two holes. There's probably rubber things that we don't have. That's the radiator all in. Now yeah. we're just working out how the AC condenser is going to fit up in here. You don't need AC, do you? <laughs> nah. It's all just very slow work, this stuff. This is something to do with it, I reckon. I don't know how or what. That'll bolt like that. They'll go in, and then this will bolt into these top ones. Fixing cars is just growing up Lego. Yeah, mate. Okay. This is 30-year-old Lego, and the instructions are in the bin, so. <laughs> the front's all back in there, condenser. I've got the uh, power steering. Oh, that's a transmission cooler in there. Todd's gonna have fun uh, fitting a front mount in there tomorrow, so. Yeah, look, there's there's not much room left for it. Yeah. But we'll see how it goes. I've had the front on off a few times, but I figured I'll leave it on, and then Todd can figure out where, where what is room. He doesn't have to worry about putting it on, pulling it off. Tidied up some wiring. I'm about to pull out the old FZ wiring loom, so we're getting pretty close to needing a loom. I think Josh is gonna get into it soon, so I'm gonna make some room, give him what he needs. So we got the wiring out. Look at the hole in there. Perfect, ready for a barrel loom. I was about to put this scuff panel on and Tyler said, do you want to clean that? I said, yeah, I'll clean it if you want. We've done such a nice job of everything else. Why, why stop under the scuff panel? Mate, if we didn't clean this, that could potentially be rust. I'm not a fan of rust. You may ask where I get this water from. This is my personal drinking water. I'm, I'm for the course. I'll be dehydrated just for this. Look how clean it is, mate. That, that must be special water there. What sort of water is it? That's just Coles brand. Might as well clean this seal while I'm here. You get me started on one thing, Tyler, I just can't stop, man. The whole car's getting clean now. I don't know what you had planned for the day, but it's gone.
That's probably about all the mucking around we can do in there for the moment. So we might move on to the gauges and UHF. Obviously we won't be able to properly wire them all in, but we can get all the in-cab stuff done and then just bring them through to the engine bay so they're ready to go when the time comes. Roberto's doing a bit of unboxing over here. So we've got the race work gauges. we got boost, boost water, water temp, temp oil, pressure. oil pressure. Yeah, three vitals. Yeah, so that's all what you need for a turbo petrol performance car. EGT's not needed. Why? Petrols are more consistent. The temps don't really matter. It's all like in the tune. It's not going to go out of yeah, crazy. Okay. You can't just hold your foot flat and they're not going to like melt your motor. Water temp, obviously make sure you're coolant and engine's not getting too hot. Boost, see how much boost your turbo's putting out. Handy in case you get a boost leak when you're on the tracks and you can actually tell what's going on. And then oil pressure, if your motor blows up, then you know. It's a good one to monitor. Like yeah. you, it'll, it'll run pretty consistent, and then if it changes, you'll think, oh, what's going on here? Yeah. It gives you a bit of a, a sign something's wrong. And then we'll do the GME here as well. So we've got the, one of the XRS head units. Aussie made, five year warranty. Got a little uh, magnetic mount there for it too. Open up the box. So I have to work out a spot for this antenna. That'll be a hand piece, which all controls from there. And then we'll just have to find a spot like in behind the glove box or under the dash or something to mount the, the actual unit for it. You know what's good about uh, these gauges? You only have to wire one of them. Other than the, the sensors, they all plug together. Okay, so you that. just give one power and earth and then they're all up in the pillar pod. They, they give you all these little ones and join them together. That makes life much easier. Yeah, Less so wires, more better. Instead of wiring three, you wire one. And this is the pillar pod we got, the triple one. This is what they look like. Boom. So we've got the daisy chain. Plug it in. Do you remember this bloke? Bang this from home, mate. Look at the name on it. Snap on. You know what it's for? What? You poke it through a rubber grommet in your firewall, and then you go, oh yeah, I need this inside the car. Straight and through. It comes out, and then you pull it out. You just gotta make sure you do it from inside the cab if you're gonna poke it this way. So then when you get it on, you can actually pull that out. Otherwise, yeah. you're stuck, mate. That's the grommet you're gonna use there to bring them through. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look from the bottom, see if I can get up in there, and if I can. In she goes. You got the sub the subwoofer in here. Just like that. She pops through like nothing, just boosa. Does the grab handle go back in? No. It's yeah. gone now. It's a sacrifice you gotta make, mate. The wiring for the gauge is just here, chilling until we get power. And then they're all all the sensors are all plugged in of uh you know, tape them all up nicely. They ran down here throughout the grommet. And then I've got all the trim on. So that's, that's going to be the finished, bolted in, all but wired up. Just got to wire it up. And then we come around here. I've got these, I've, I've taped them together so they're in like a package. And then I've just bunched them up. There's the UHF all mounted up there. With the UHF in, next little job is to fit the pedal bracket. Yeah. So how's that work? Like you can't use the FZ pedal. Like what's? It's cable. This is electronic. So this is fly by wire. So there's no actual physical connection to your throttle body. It's all done by computer. Okay, so, so this is the electric pedal out of the territory, and this is the bracket that what McKinnon's Cruisers sell you. Point him up there, get him done. We'll be good to go. This is one of those things that you. You're tucked up in here, you probably won't be able to see me. Just imagine that I'm, I'm struggling. Berto's gone home and then Todd has subbed in. He's back here today and working on the gear stick shifts around. He's already spent a couple of hours on it this morning, so we'll go in and see what he's done. Getting on top of it now because Berto's not here today, so we can get some shit done. <laughs> <laughs> no talking. Haven't got him distracting yet. Yeah. What I did, use the original 80 series plate Territory T-bar, so it suits the auto. Just ran the cable through in underneath into the tunnel. There's an existing hole there, so I didn't have to cut nothing. Put a grommet in it, around it, seal her up. Yeah, the low range stick, had to shift it forward a little bit with enough room for engine movement because it's mounted to the gearbox itself. So we're just gonna shift a little bit. The existing rubber, so you'll sit in there and I'll make a plate up, screw it to this one, seal it up, stop any dirt and that coming up in through that. This is the original 80 series surround. So we're sitting over there. Yeah, so that's pretty much all done then. Like uh, both yeah. the shifters mounted up and that's just gonna be a matter of making this look a bit pretty in here. Yeah, with a bit tidier. Of, yeah, it's obviously the six speed ZF gearbox shifter and you've got your Tiptronic, yeah, like manual, manual mode as well, which is good. 
If you have any ideas for what we can do to infill the gear stick surrounds, drop a comment down below. With that sorted for the moment though, it was time to move on to the intercooler. Being that the Barra block has got a big turbo mounted, an intercooler is necessary to help cool down all the extra air this engine is going to be sucking. All the front of the car is back off there. It's obviously a front mount intercooler, meaning it has to fit at the front of the car here for air to smack it and cool it. And you're trying to MacGyver it into this spot somehow. Yeah, so we had everything on there and sort of roughly work out where this needs to be. Yeah. So we want to get it as close and as high as we can. Now because this is a Ford motor in a Toyota Land Cruiser, unfortunately you can't just buy an off-the-shelf kit that has all the mounting brackets and piping ready to bolt in. So we just bought the intercooler itself, which came from Plasma Man, and then everything else would have to be custom made. The piping is going to be done in the next episode, but the plan today was make the brackets and get the cooler all mounted up in position, so Todd got to work doing that. That's the inner cooler mounted on the front of the car there. Todd's made up those brackets, so you got that big one underneath there, a couple of smaller ones on top, but it's not going anywhere. Yeah, I got that one in there. Like, you probably shouldn't use that as a, a bonnet support, but once all that's all locked up, I think it should be sweet. So I'll just leave them there for now, but um, maybe tomorrow, the next day, I'm saying I have to pull these back off and paint them. We're back, another day in the shed. Day 792 of the 80 build probably so far. It's a Friday and today is our last day to get this car ready before the Coffs Toyota day, which is tomorrow. Obviously it's not going to be driving and ready. It's going there on a trailer, but we're trying to get it to all look as nice as possible. Demi's been over this morning and put all the fresh stickers on both sides. She spent a long time making sure they're very straight. So if everyone wants to comment down below, Demi, the stickers are crooked. We can really trigger her. Before we get into what's going on today though, I thought I'd take a few minutes to run through the bar work on this car. So this is the rear bar. <laughs> Todd actually built this late last year. I filmed a heap of stuff on it, so I'll cut to some of that footage now and have a bit of a chat about it. So this is all the bar work we got for the 80 here. It's come from Coastal Off-Road. And this is a full like DIY kit bar work for the 80. But the idea behind this kit is they provide instructions, all the cut pieces to shape, and then we just have to weld it together and then we'll have to get it powder coated as well. All unpackaged on the ground there, we're just trying to work out. We think all that's rear bar, we think that over there is front bar. We can't find instructions here. That might be it, we found it. Instructions. <gasps> Ta -da! With the factory rear bar off, now we can start piecing together our jigsaw puzzle with the help of some instructions. And yeah, start lining it all up and bringing it together. They're originally an American or Canadian company. I forget now, one or the other, but they make DIY bar work. So it comes in flat packs and then you build it yourself. In this case, Todd built it. He's quite skilled on the welder and grinding and bar work. They have actually recently moved their product to Australia though. And so you can buy it in Australia now, which is really cool. I really like their bar work. That's the recovery points going onto the bar there now. So how it works is you've got a plate which goes up through bolted onto the chassis. So you're like strengthened, but then you strengthen it more by welding on to outside plates as well, just to make it nice and thick and strong there. So this is a rear bar. We just went a single spare tire carrier one, which is the main reason we went a, a rear bar. Like this car is literally going to be mostly a mall crawler. Like it's gonna do some beach work and that. So we're not gonna do hard wheeling. We would have left the factory bumper, but this will still give a bit of protection down the back, which is good if you need it. It's high clearance, so more clearance. But as I said, none of that stuff really gonna be that relevant to us. But the main thing is we need the spot to mount the spare 35 inch tire. And because it's a DIY flat pack, you can maneuver things around and make it work what suits best for you and your car. So because we didn't get a dual jerry can holder, we just got the swing away, we brought it into the middle and we angled it back a bit. So with a spare tire on here, it sits in the middle, it's a bit angled and it gives that really nice look. It's got a hitch receiver in it there. It's got recovery points on either side. Obviously a latch for your tire here. And yeah, super stoked of how that's come out. Uh, now we got it off the car. 
Um, I can get up all up from the inside to do a few welds. I'll start running all my welds off. Just a little linisher. Get all them looking nice square. Get all the radiuses sweet. And then I'll just go over it with the board or sander and just get it all looking trick. And just trying to weld it all up so there's no warpage and that. It still does need to get powder coated though. What do you guys reckon? We're kind of deciding whether to go white or black. I'm kind of leaning towards black. I think of white, just everything being white on the car will look a bit hectic. That brings us to what's going on today though. Todd's down the front now working on the bull bar, which is from the same company, Coastal Off-Road. It's a hoopless one because once again, not doing hard wheeling in this car. It's more just a front protection bull bar there. And it's still got all that bottom support. So if Demi crashes again, she'll be much more protected than last time. But yeah, we didn't want a big hooped bull bar. And it's got some cool lights that sit in the bull bar. It's winch compatible. We do not have a winch set yet though, so we'll just build it without the winch. And then once the front bull bar is done, then we'll be able to drop them both off to powder coaters next week. But yeah, Todd's getting that done, so it's ready for this Coffs Toyota show day tomorrow. And what, what's that thing there? We've got some actual tools in the shed. So we had a special delivery this morning from SP Tools. Very exciting an actual toolbox. So I'll cut back to some of the footage. Demi was here when she was doing the stickers and Berto and her and I unboxed that and set it all up. Big news, what's this over here? What what's have we got? What's this over here, mate? What's big this? Big box, big box. Who's it from? Look, I don't know, we, we need to read a name here somewhere. What's, we got I S pulled the S invoice off, mate. SP Tools is on that there. SP tools, That's SP Tools. That's SP Tools. It's just ironic that the tools we need to unbox it are in this box. Ah. Whoa. What is it, Zef? Even Zef's excited. Oh, can I do that? That looks fun. Are you sure you need to do this? I've got more experience getting in the boxes. Look. That's exactly what Todd needs. <laughs> Literally. Is it? Ten minutes ago. Hey, Todd, we've got you your tools. But just in case you do. Look! It's a baby! So many tools. So little time. So I, I reckon we get the two big ones out of the box and then we'll put everything in it. Oh. Oh. Whoa, Zip! We got wheels. Do you need help carrying it with my muscles since like I have some? You know how to put wheels on Demi or what? No. You're gonna learn today, let me tell you. And the drawer's packed. <laughs> <laughs> we finally have a proper toolkit for the shed after 12 months of working with my budget Big W tools. Kmart uh, Audi tools. Yeah, Kmart Audi. I wouldn't even call them Big W. <laughs> it's 293 piece custom series toolkit. Um, it's a big upgrade from what we've had. <laughs> it's got all these tools. It's got, you know, they're all foamed in, double powder coated, ball bearing slides, everything slides easy. But look, everything's, everything's packed away nicely. We have the new bonnet back from the spray paint as well, second hand one that we got is a bit cheaper and then just got it all resprayed white. So we'll be able to get that on today. With the front bar and the bonnet, we are going to have an actual car. Looks like a car, just can't actually drive it anywhere. But anyways, that's enough talking for me. I'll keep filming some footage of Todd building this coastal off-road bumper bull bar. It's starting to come together, it looks bloody sick already. That's one side there, fully finished. Still got the other side over here to go. But it is two o'clock, time's ticking for our deadline show tomorrow. We've still got lots of things to do. So we're gonna stop that for now and get the bonnet on, get the grill and all that on, start piecing the actual whole structure back together. Might go to the show tomorrow with the bull bar half finished, but that's all right, a little bit, a little before and after. Front's coming on, together, yeah. looks good. Just got these new lights turned up in the mail. You know, the ones Demi smashed, so we're going <laughs> to replace them so they look nice. What do you reckon, Demi? They look just like the other ones, but not smashed. They do. We nearly just smashed it by dropping it on the floor. Couldn't have been any worse than what you did, do it? Yeah. Do you see that, Demi? Yeah. That says SP. Feels nice in the hand. That's what she this. said. Look at that, side lights and front lights, bush to headlights, what a Usually combo. A couple of bush to lights. What a combo. That's pretty much it back together. 
The sun actually looks so sick. We don't really have time today, but we're gonna have to play around a little bit with lining everything up nicely. Like it's pretty good, but a couple of the things are a bit off. Because you've got multiple parts from different cars, it's gonna take a little bit of fiddling. Worst case, we'll take it to a panel beater to get them to line everything up perfectly. But yeah, it should be all good. Time to drag this car out. And it's about to see lights for the first time in a long time. Drag her out, washer. She's out of the shed, give it a wash, get it looking as nice as we can for the show tomorrow. Nice scrub up on the 80, get all the shed dust off, and now we'll try and get it up on this trailer. Started jumping, what a day. Swear to God, I need it now. I can't afford to wait. I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait. Told him this would happen, and we not a minute late. Seen him down bad, now they trying to hate. Same one shot to hit me for the race. Got a man, now they coming with a place. Check the numbers, fam. I swear I'm getting paid. So that's her. The car's loaded up, back in the shed, ready to head off onto the show. First thing tomorrow, and that's another 80 episode coming to an end, I suppose. Look at this, we got the 80 actually back together, mate. Look at that, shoes on, let's see. <laughs> hey, the safety boots. Yeah. I'm bait, I'm flexed, but I'm pushing out of weight. So the mall, I swear I got it's what it takes. Phone started jumping, what a day. Swear to God, I need it now, I can't afford to wait. I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait. I, I can't, I can't have you acting up like this. Nah, no, mate, you, come on, come on. The other way around, you're back to front. I'll scratch the shit out of this thing. He's so. doing this. Oh yeah. Hey, it's more. Get off your head, Devin. Oh yeah. There's some of them nice new bolts I put in there. I got a cut shoulder. So I hit the radiator. And film it. All right, let's go. Bibbidi bobbidi. We're on, Ron. Is my sound sound yeah, check yeah, sound yeah, working? Yeah, yeah, double dibbidi.